time we turn on our television, someone is trying to convince us our lives would be better if we just bought their product or followed their particular example for life. At one point, a skin cream company tried to convince us that they made a cream that somehow changed the laws of biology and made us skinnier. Shoe companies have claimed that all we had to do was buy their shoes to get skinnier. Even hand sanitizer tells us that they can kill germs and viruses even though the product contains less than the 60% of the alcohol needed to actually kill those germs. So when the Bible claims that Jesus came to give us life and life to its fullest, or that God can do more than we could ask or imagine, I wonder if people don't look at these claims the same way we do when we hear that Taco Bell serves beef in their tacos, even though they are less than 35% beef, and I didn't continue reading the article to find out what the other 65% was. We have become conditioned to be skeptical of grandiose claims. In fact, we consider these claims as either an exercise in egoism or deception. So when the Bible says that the joy, peace, and satisfaction that we're all looking for can only be found in the God of the Bible, many people have a hard time with that, and I get it. A lot of people make those claims, yet our world is still broken. But if it's true that God exists, and if it's true that he created us whole, then God is the only one who can make us whole again. Discovering and trusting in this fundamental truth about who you and I are is the first step in experiencing the glory of God. God did not only create us as individuals. He created us to reflect the relationships that he has within himself, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, what we call the Trinity. He has commissioned us to be a church, a people belonging to God. As a church, we have many responsibilities, promoting justice, defending the defenseless, evangelism, worship, and so much more. But the highest calling our church has is to glorify God, to promote the glory of God in our temples, in our land, and in the nations. Everything we do as a church, then, should serve the singular purpose. Therefore, church becomes something other than an organization. Participation in church becomes something more than our programs something more than our worship teams or more than our facilities. Doing church is about participating in the glory of God. And we don't need a flashy service or ear-tickling sermons or grand facilities to participate in what God is already doing in our community. I ask you to consider joining our church as we passionately pursue an experience for the glory of God. As we pursue participating in God's plan to fill the temple, to fill our land, and to fill the nations with his glory.